<laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Rich Chang's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. Um, we're doing so well I travel everywhere by mini train now with Dave Gorman. Uh, that's how it goes. This one's Joe Lysett though on the actual podcast. I'm not talking to Dave, it's just a coincidence he's behind me. If you like Rahel Estepar, why not come and see some of them in 2019? Uh, we've got more at Leicester Square Theatre from the 4th of February to the 1st of April every Monday and we're also touring the country to lots of places and uh, anyway let's sit we go to richchain.com slash gigs and you can find out where we're coming Um, there's Wolverhampton and Brighton and Bath and lots of places there's Dave Gorman say hello Dave hello (laughs) see ya have enjoyed the show bye Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who today on Twitter has tweeted a picture of him holding a gigantic stone and looking delighted. It's Richard Herring. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello and welcome uh, to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. I've got a bit of a throg in my throat. I'm going I'm to run through it and see if it goes away. <coughs> Uh, though I was uh, talking to uh, Neil Kinnock at the <laughs> at the Sheffield rally on the 1st of April 1992. Uh, and he calls it Rehelispa, so I don't know. And he also said, we're all right! We're all right! We're all right! That's what he also said. People will mainly remember that from that. Uh, that. Anyway, yes, I've been doing more of my uh, stone clearing. My, uh, I've, I've, I don't know if you've all been following this. I'm, I'm probably going to turn this into a separate podcast. <laughs> because some people don't like enjoy this material as much. It's a running thing through this series. Uh, there's a field near me where I live. I walk my dog around. It's very stony. I've started taking the stones off the field and, and creating works of art. It's a work of art, really. It's a sort of transgressive art thing that I like to do. I'm trying to build a wall around the edge of the field. It's a massive field, I have to say, and there. There are a lot of stones. I think I can do it in the next 40 or 50 years. It was, don't laugh at me. Uh, and, uh, but this week, uh, well, first of all, the, today I, I, found, like, I found an iceberg stone. I, I don't need to tell you what that is. That is a stone that doesn't look that big when you go to get it, but then you find it underneath the ground. There's like, it was as big as my baby's head. And there's a photo of me on Twitter looking insane holding it I thought, because people take photos of themselves and they go fishing don't they if they get a big fish so why shouldn't a man who collects stones <laughs> proudly show a photo what's the difference no difference is the difference but somebody uh, in my village has taken against my stones I've made quite a lot of cans there's quite a big there's the beginnings of a wall in one corner uh, and someone admittedly is right outside their back gate that goes onto the field they've kicked it all over <laughs> But that's okay, you know, because I'm an artist and that's like Van Gogh when he was out in the sunflower fields. People probably were throwing tomatoes at him when they go, fuck off, Van Gogh, what are you doing? Leave those sunflowers alone. I expect old Michael Angelo, old Michael Angelo, I expect when he was carving David, people were chipping bits of that off, weren't they? It's just the one. It's my favourite, Michael Angelo, he's the best. First name's Michael, second name Angelo. That is. He was also in the Turtles, wasn't he? So he's, he, he had a varied career. He's done all right. We're all right. We're all right. So that's my, that's my week. Uh, <laughs> that's my week. Oh, he said, like, it's because it's cold now, it's winter. Do have to, and, and any stone clearers out there will know how d- you get down. And the stones are so cold in the ground. It's unbelievable. You under, it's actually, it's where life and death meet. And this is why it's a real life. You have to get there. When you feel those stones, you know that one day you too will be under the ground and as cold as those stones. But you're alive and you touch them. You know your bones will one day... But it's an amazing experience. Uh, so <laughs> do give it a go if you haven't. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. It's fine. So um, please welcome my guest this evening. We've only got one guest. There's only one podcast each week, as we know. <laughs> Everyone knows that. He's probably best known, according to Wikipedia. I think he might have put this on just before uh, this morning, knowing that I would see it and then introduce him as it. And it isn't true. He's probably best known as Bungle. In uh... <laughs> not what you're thinking. It's in two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. 2002. Could that be him for real? Let's find out, ladies and gentlemen. It's Joe Lysett. <laughs> oh. 
Come in, sit down. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hello, everyone. I didn't put that on there. That's not me. Is it? Is it true that you were it's bungle? It's absolutely one hundred percent true. Is it? I was bungle in two pints of lager and a packet of crisps, but it got cut in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was furious about it. Yeah. But thank you for reminding me. <laughs> No, I don't know who's done that. Wikipedia's a weird thing, isn't it? Because people yes. just decide what they want you to be on it, and then yeah. they put it on there and nobody really checks. Yeah. Have citation you, uh, needed as well. Citation needed. Have you had any curious things? Oh, yeah, all sorts of things. There was something on this, this week about uh, Stuart Lee saying I was a shagger, That's, which is true. Uh, I, don't, I, don't know if he, I don't know if he said it, but someone... You've had was, sex. I've had... I have shagged. How was it? Tell me. Uh, it was quite... <laughs> The first time, not very good. No. And then that's the only time I've done it. I've just done it once. <laughs> and who was that with? <laughs> it was with Stuart Lee. Uh, so <laughs> well, I, I think I found the root of your problem. <laughs> I imagine Stuart to be a, um, a selfish and shit lover. Yes. <laughs> I imagine he intellectualises it too much, like all fucking things. <laughs> and actually, you just want a hand job. Yeah. Well, weirdly enough, I did, I did tell you backstage I'd never have a hand job off a man, didn't I? I did, well, that was one of our backstage chats. Did but, you? I don't remember but, uh, it. <laughs> but Lee did, a, did attempt up. to masturbate me with the hand of a hundred-year-old venture. Oh, of, course, of course he did. Yes, so he, course. I, was, I, remember I was lying. this very vividly. Yeah. So, I mean, people in the room might not know that I am, um, I am... I would say I'm the number one fan of the Richard Herring Leicester Square Theatre podcast. That's very nice. There might be people in the room that disagree with that, and that's probably because they've listened to all of them. And, you know... <laughs> And paid to come and see and some of them. And paid to come and see them, whereas I will do neither, yeah. ever. But I listen to your podcast a lot, yes. and I'm really thrilled to be on it again. I know last time I was on, I talked about how much I love the show and, and whatever. But uh, this year, so I went to Italy for a while, and I hired a car, and I drove around Italy for a little bit, and I listened to loads of the show. I found oh. it very soothing while I was on the motorways of Italy. That was before one of the bridges collapsed in Italy. Whether I would do it again, I don't know. Um, but I um, I'd like love to your... think if you are, were on a collapsing bridge, yes. list, that you would yeah. be listening Just to my as... podcast. And laughing, at least, yeah. as, you, as you went. Yeah, Catherine Ryan delivering an anecdote <laughs> as I tower to my death. Um, yeah, no, I think it's a really fun podcast. Thank you and very much. I'm That's really good. thrilled to be on it, and I have thoughts. Oh, good. It's, welcome. it's lovely to have you back, I have to say. You uh, don't want to hear my thoughts? Yeah, go on. I'll, 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 we, can get straight, we can get straight into that. Yes, go on, then. Sometimes it becomes tired. Um, <laughs> I feel sometimes... No, I re I'm really enjoying that. I'm, I'm, I just I got silly then. I felt really silly. No, it's really good. You're really... I mean, what a level of guest you get. You've really loaded yourself amazing. for old Joe Lysett, but I'm thrilled to be here. No, it's fantastic to have you. Uh, it's, uh, no, it's been, it's, been, it's been lovely. It's a, it's a very fun thing for me to do, and nearly always it's nice, nearly always good. Yeah. How are you feeling that this one might go? I well, I've given you know, it. There's, there's a few... You're cracking I'm up gonna, in the beer. I'm going to have a... Desperately. <laughs> You're welcome to have a beer. I know you're drinking wine. No, but, I'm on uh, the white wine this evening. Uh, I'm drinking. I'm back to Beer 52. Uh, Cheers. If you, if you want eight of these yourselves at home, go to beer52.com slash Rahulastapa. Look all these things. There's a book here yeah, by Richard books. Herring. There's all sorts of things. I just keep them around just, uh, yeah, you know, just in case, in case people things get boring. Emergency questions. I can just... Oh, let's ask one. <laughs> let's go to the first one. What is your favourite colour? 209. <laughs> What a good question. Orange. And that's why that book's orange. Oh, my God, he knows his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I like orange because I used to... The reason I chose orange as my favourite colour as a kid was because I liked sweets that were orange. And I like sweets. My daughter's the same. She loves sweets. I guess it's just How a kid thing. How old is your daughter now? She's like three and a half. And how's that going? Is yeah, she... it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's good fun. This morning she said... Um, she saw the Apple logo on the back of her phone... And she, and she was debating why there was a hole in the apple, and she decided it was because an ant had eaten the bit out of the apple. <laughs> That's stupid, adorable. What would you say idiot. to her if she asked, why can't we live forever? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's quite grasped. She's obsessed with death, as I think again, kids are. I was obsessed with death. But any you child of Richard Herring would be. <laughs> <laughs> no, it could come at any moment. Um, I... It's a shame. I do, I'm, you know, it's a shame that you can't live. Once you've procreated, especially, you sort of think it'd be nice to hang around at yeah. least to see how they got on, and then they'll have more kids, and then you, you don't want to give up the story, do you? So it's a shame. No. God's a fucking idiot. Why would someone who is immortal create mortality? That is my question to you. That is the more interesting question. So he was immortal, God. Mm. He'd always been. He always will be. 
No, nothing lived or died. He think I'm going to make some stuff, but it's not going to be like me. It's going to die. Why would he do that, Joe? I don't know. There's lots of questions like that that yeah. um, baffle me all the time. So I'm interested in the uh, concept of nothingness at the mm -hmm. minute. So um, uh, I'm reading a book about Buddhism, and one of the uh, sort of big things in Buddhism is about um, accepting that you are um, the, the not self, basically, that you don't exist in some ways. <clears throat> in lots of ways, the Buddhist That's teaching, not a good way to sell books, is it? That it's is not. You don't exist. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, but I'm really interested in the concept of nothingness because uh, if nothingness is a thing, then you still have, it's still a concept. It still exists in the, in the concept of it, doesn't it? Yeah. And so if you think of nothingness as an absence of matter and ideas and the laws of physics, all of that, it still exists within the framework of the idea of nothingness. So nothingness can't possibly exist because it's an idea, even though it encases um, something that is nothing. Isn't that interesting and lovely for your podcast? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've got in quite serious quite quickly. Yeah, I've been um, on the wine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, d true, uh, but it's, <laughs> if you um, if you went out clearing stones from fields, you'd get an idea of death. death. <laughs> so it's once you've got your fingers in yeah. the ground, the ground's so cold, Joe. Yeah, and you don't realise how cold the universe is until you put your hand in a field in winter. You don't yeah. realise how that's cold part of the universe. universe. The field, it in is, a way, yeah. is the is the universe in a microcosm of the universe. Yes, and you put your hand in, you realise, God, that's it. And th this field has been in; these stones have been here for a long time, mm. and we we're, we're here for a, a fleeting second. We're we warm are. and alive, but we'll be dead soon. But please buy the Richard Herring <laughs> Emergency <laughs> Questions book with some, your time. There's some funny ones. I'll buy the new, buy the new one. Don't oh, buy sorry, the, the new one. God, yeah. fuck this old shit. Yeah, let's <laughs> chuck that out. God, it's terrible paper quality. Actually, no, I prefer the... Has that been published by a proper it's author? published by a proper, proper publisher. Yes, yeah, Sphere publisher. the thing, isn't it, you see? You get a proper publisher and they go for shitty old paper. With this, <laughs> this is obviously a lovely um, uncoated stock. That's what okay. it's known as, this thing. I used to be a graphic designer. Did you? That's really lovely. Whereas Welcome. that, they, you know, they throw any old shit out like that. When all the, this but hang on, is, let me have a look at that this one. This was a Kickstarter award, and Chris Evans, not that one, when he does the Kickstarter awards, as you'll find if you've got your, uh, your oh frig, I'm 50 stuff through, there's a beautiful uh, bag saying a, a bag for life. There's, if you've done the Kickstarter for the Realistapur, there's an amazing Rubik's Cube that is much better quality than it needs to be, I have to say. <laughs> the, is it, is it broken already? Here, the, on the, like the, 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 um, the binding on it isn't, yeah. isn't perfect. Okay. Like it feels... <laughs> Smells cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas this, beautiful, very yeah. nice. And that was Go Faster Stripe, and yep. they're people that care about shit. <laughs> Whereas, who's this? Sphere. Who's the fuck's heard of Sphere? <laughs> <laughs> Are they here tonight? Um, like, maybe. You never yeah. know. Are they, you know, this I will go out, though, into the world, and they probably won't be that happy about They're it. an imprint of Little Brown Book Group. Yeah. Now, what's that? Um, so I um, tried to troll a book group Did recently. You? Because... <laughs> So um, there was a, uh, a book that was released, which is like a thousand jokes or something like that. And all of the jokes in there are from comedians who um, I know, basically, right. and none of them were credited, and none of them were obviously being paid for the book, the jokes that they'd yep. stolen from them, essentially, for that book. So I pitched to that company my own joke book, and they were obviously very interested because I'm Joe Lassett off the television. Absolutely. So I said, oh, I've got a, an idea for a book of loads of jokes. And they're like, yeah, lovely, great. Send us a pitch. So I sent them a pitch and some sample chapters. <laughs> and in those sample chapters was literally a copy and paste of their book that they <laughs> made, they'd already got yeah. published. And they were like, yeah, we're really interested. <laughs> um, how much do you want? And I went in really high, like seven million or something <laughs> stupid. And they went, oh, well, actually, that's not for us. Which is annoying because I really wanted to get a... I essentially wanted to publish a book <laughs> of <laughs> third hand jokes that they'd stolen from people like Gary Delaney and Tim yeah. Vine and all these brilliant comics and they just nobody can do anything because we're comics aren't we how nobody, do you feel that, that Gary Delaney and Tim Vine would feel if you put out a book that was there of their jokes I feel well? if I'd explained the logic of why I'd done it they would have been they would appreciate yes. it and I probably would have given them the money but more likely <laughs> more likely gone to the south of France had a lovely time fair enough well it's quite interesting because you do you have this skittish sort of I, I don't, playing with the world in fact what you know you do the things that most comedians do as a way to procrastinate away from working which is going on twitter and being naughty yeah and you've turned that into your main source of income <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is, yeah. which is actually silly? very impressive it's really silly i don't know how I've, I've, I've managed it really but people seem to really engage with it and um i'm glad because i've got nothing else <laughs>
Well, I think it's, but I think it's what a comedian. Uh, yeah, there's lots of things comedians should be, but it's one of the things that comedian is good for a comedian to be is to be like a fly in the ointment. Yeah, and just doing things. I mean, it's not most of them are for no real reason. It's not. I mean, I saw. Remember, one of your reviews was saying, you know, Mark Tom Thomas will do big stunts for big political reasons, and not many of yours have real <laughs> any real point to them beyond let's let's have a go at someone who's been a bit of a dick. No, Fair no, enough. I don't, um, well, no, I wouldn't agree with that, no, okay. Richard. Um, but thank you for your input. <laughs> <laughs> no, I generally I mean, try to. I mean, it's a compliment. I don't because it's 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 you know it's just it's that fly in the ointment thing. It's just being a spanner in the works and yeah. dicking around for the fun of it, right? So no, rather, like, rather than no, doing yeah, it. Yeah, I don't I don't go heavy like Mark Thomas no. does, and I think Mark Thomas is absolutely amazing, no, and extraordinary, too. and 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 rightly very political. And I don't consider myself to be a political comedian because I don't really know who's. Right, so I don't want to, I don't want to put my sort of ha like uh, uh, opinion into the ring because sure. I don't I don't know. But again, I think that's something a comedian possibly should be as well. I mean, again, there's no definitions of what comedians have to be. Yeah. But a comedian should be taking the piss out of everything and everyone. Yeah. And so the minute you've nailed your colours to a mast on a subject, then it's it's quite difficult to do that. So. It is absolutely. So I still like will like nail my colours to the mast on certain things. So in my current show, I have a whole thing about trying to destroy the career of Tom Daly because um, he was sponsored by Barclays to go to Gay Pride last year and had loads of Barclays like branding all over him or whatever. And I felt like, cool, go to Pride and publicize that as much as possible. But to be sponsored by them and to be paid to go to a political event, which Pride is, the first one was a riot, to me is the equivalent of going Black Lives Matter with Tesco. Like it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, it's not, you're not really on board with the idea, I don't think if you're being sponsored by them. So I have a whole thing in that. So that is like a big idea that I am challenging. Sure. But I also just like slag off my friend's kids as well, which <laughs> is, not, you know, they have no political beliefs. Well, I feel they're Brexiteers, but um, <laughs> they have no real, you know, um, there's no real reason to slag them off other than that I found no. them irksome and I'm difficult with children. And, you know, getting in touch. I mean, it's, I, I, I used to do this when I was a student where you'd find out you could get some vouchers off companies if you compl made spurious complaints about stuff. Yeah. But then you do sort of funny, stupid complaints. And mm. uh, I, I mean, I spent so much time. I, was, I don't know if I talked to you about this last time. I think I've mentioned it before. But like there was, I spent like a long time writing this very long letter from a mad old person about how, uh, it was, I think it was Golden Wonder said they were Britain's noisiest crisps. And then he was debating how they'd work that out. Yes, I love this sort of show. Yeah, yeah. So, and so I wrote a long, and like I said, I was going to send it to That's Life, which dates it. Uh, and <laughs> about how but you say Golden Wonder of Britain's noisiest crisps, sir, but I've heard loud, noisier whispers. It was that kind of terrible, torturous, yeah. really long, long poem. Lovely. And got two pounds of free crisp vouchers and was, del was delighted. But yeah. You know, if I'd just gone and done a job that day, I could have probably made a hundred quid. Or <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I wanted. No, that yeah, that is very much my vibe. Yeah. Like any any claims like that, I'm happy to sort of pick apart. And I do also, if somebody sends, I get quite a lot these days of messages on Instagram from people sort of claiming. I mean, they're fake accounts essentially, just sort of girls in bikinis being like, "Hey," yeah. and then you look, and they've got two followers, and they've been on. Instagram for a day and I will often reply to that. I like to convince them that I'm trapped in a well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my new thing. So I'll, I'll be like very like chill and a bit flirty and then when they get really down to the nitty gritty of like, hey, why don't you click on this link? I'll be like, I can't because I'm trapped down a well. <laughs> Well, you collected these in uh, in this fabulous book. It's been out for a little while. Uh, a few years now. It's buttered. Yes, I yes. got it for Christmas a couple of years ago from my wife, who's a big fan of yours. Oh, Katie uh, Wilkins. Yeah, Katie Wilkins. She's um, a great... Oh, did you call her Katie Herring now? I, no, I call her Katie Wilkins. Mm. I always... I can't don't let her, her don't, don't, don't let her get too settled in the role. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Uh, also, she sort of reluctantly took my name... So oh. I don't want to. I don't want to labour the point too much. So like on all the documents, yeah. she's Katie Herring. Yeah, right. Yeah, but in you know in a in a working life, which well, she's got lots of different. She's a children's author. She's called Catherine Wilkins there. When she's yes. a comedian, she's called Katie Wilkins. Right. That sort of is a trick to stop people realizing that's the same person. Yeah. So she's just saying this trouble. publicly on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very clever trick. In some no, ways. no one could sit, see through that disguise. No, of course. Uh, but yes, it's, I've been rereading it. It's it's uh, there's there's lots of great fun stuff in it. I like I love the. Uh, did you really? So like, I never believe anything you say. 
Why Did not? Because I just don't trust you. Why? Because all the things. I love to, you, Richard. All these things. That's why. That's why you love me so much. I don't. I can't trust somebody. You like can't me. look me in the eye because you know it's true. <laughs> I love you too. You're wonderful. Um, you worked at an Aztec mini golf in, uh, like in, in place. Yes. Is that true? That is true. Why was it Aztec mini golf? Fuck knows. <laughs> It was in, uh, I can tell you, it's still there, Star City, Birmingham. Yeah. I think it's called Adventure Island Mini Golf, Star City. Okay. And I worked there, oh, I don't know, on and off for about a year. And I would basically give the golf clubs out and the balls yeah. and work on the tiki hut where they would do little <laughs> cocktails and beers. Oh, that's nice. As you pop round. For mini golf, though, I mean, isn't it for kids' mini golf? Yeah, but the parents want to get pissed yeah, and all that. So, like, um, yeah. I would provide that service. With cocktails while their kids are playing mini golf, they're getting pissed. At, I mean, it's a good yeah. idea. I'm, it is a good I'm, idea. I'm going to go there. Well, there's a new one in Birmingham which is called Ghetto Golf, and you can just take beers around with you. Like, it's encouraged. You just right. get totally shit-faced. So that's the new thing. Um, but that was... Uh, back in the day when I was working at the mini uh, Adventure Island Mini Golf Star City. And yes, the, um, the, I, the, the, it was a perfectly fine little job. I enjoyed it. I quite liked the little jobs I had. I did that and I worked in a theatre, I worked in a couple of theatres selling um, ice creams and working right. on the bar. Yeah. Um, I liked all those jobs. But in the mini golf, the manager there was a little bit nervous about, for some reason, about um, terrorism. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and thought that there might be a terrorist attack. So we had to um, do occasional sort of, um, what do you call it, uh, drills. Thank you so much They're to the voice in the darkness. <laughs> and um, we had to do drills. And um, you normally say in um, like any of these establishments, like when I worked in the theatre, if there's a fire, I'm sure it's the same in the Leicester Square Theatre, rather than say over the radio, there's a fire on fucking stage or whatever, <laughs> you say, Mr. Sands is on stage yeah. or something of that ilk. But the people who worked in mini golf didn't really understand... Um, metaphors or similes. <laughs> and so we had to say, Mr. Bomb <laughs> is on hole number four. Um, so we had a few drills yeah. where we had to do that and then the people in mini golf in Birmingham, so, you know, yeah. that's sort of like, uh, Mr. Bomb's on hole number four. <laughs> and you get that and you go and check number four and then you go, false alarm, and then that was it. Yeah. It's weird that with that Mr. Sands, because it's so well, I mean, I know it from the theatre, and but it's kind of, you hear it in other places, you go, oh shit, there's a fire somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's everyone so well knows known. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I wonder whether they've changed it now, yeah. whether that's like, but I think it's Double still bluff some with places. Mr. Bomb, Mr. Huge Fire. Mr. Yeah. yeah. No one would suspect that. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. <laughs> they would yeah. Mr. Richard Herring <laughs> wow. is on stage. Yeah. And you well, are on fire tonight, darling. That would clear, that would, that would clear uh, the theatre. Um, <laughs> next question. Next question. I might go on to an emergency question in a, in a second. I'd I love an emergency question. I love this podcast. Oh, right. no, you're not going to let I'll me. ask. Well, this one's... I think you'll be able to answer this question. I've, I was, I've got fed up with the Daily Express um, who ask women questions they wouldn't ask men. So I've started to ask men Oh, yeah, and the Daily the Express also will take, like, a tiny little nugget of something that's happened on television and turn it into a full article. Yes, well... So I'm, I hosted Sunday Brunch uh, once, and I did some little cursory joke about Simon Rimmer being dead or something like that. I can't even remember what he was. And they turned it into this bigger comedian slams Simon Rimmer and says he's dead or whatever the article yeah. was. And it's just some prick who's got nothing going on in their lives who's been paid a tenner to write an article for the Express. Yeah, well, um, it, it happens a lot with The Chase, which uh, we'll talk to Jenny Ryan about that exact thing, I think, in the next podcast. because they, they, they They're obsessed with it. And that'll happen chase. next week. Yeah, next week. That we're going to talk about that. <laughs> and how The Express are just obsessed with turning fairly trivial incidents yeah. into massive... Oh, Bradley Walsh went insane. I mean, that discovered. is the press, but when you're sort of in it and you've done the show and you go like, oh, it's just a tiny little joke, you kind of realise, you go like, oh, fuck, like there are people watching everything you do. Yeah. Fine, it's the tiniest little bit. And it's interesting when they go back through things like, I've been obsessed with the whole Sean Walsh on Strictly thing. <laughs> and they go back through all of his material of stuff that he's done on shows like years ago and go like, he joked about shagging like 10 years ago. <laughs> and they use that and you go like, well, obviously, he's a comic. And like, like it's, I do find it fascinating. It is. You've got to create so much stuff that it's too much work for them to go through. All. Yeah. That's what I've done. <laughs> uh, so, if they went through it, they'd find a fuck of a lot of stuff. But, I mean, who could be bothered? Who could be bothered? Well, this is a question the Daily Express asks women, and, and I'm going to ask it to you. And yes. This is, it, but it feels quite apt for you. What's your beauty secret? 
all women get asked that question regardless of whether they're interested in beauty or that's but mm. what is your beauty secret would you say joe lice i would say very expensive creams really <laughs> it is a secret then um only because i was gifted some um um because i'm in show business um uh, what was I doing? The Great British Sewing Bee. Oh, yes. Ooh. And um, I was, uh, because it was a full series and whatever, we, um, Sisley. Am I allowed to, say, I, that sounds like I'm endorsing them. You as can a say brand. anything you like. No, but I don't want to endorse a brand. Okay. Sisley are wankers and they kill kids. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's like now it's halfway, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's halfway. <laughs> um, <laughs> they might come back from their cream. Yes. <laughs> now, after you've that, done this. Maybe that's why my skin is so wonderful, because it's used from the dead children that they've <laughs> murdered to put into their cream, which they definitely do, and I will agree to it in court. <laughs> Fuck. Um, <laughs> Daily Express has got a new article. Certainly have. Comedian kills kids by accident by wearing Sicily cream. Um, so I've started using this Sicily cream. I turned okay. 30 this year and this cream like came. And I'm, I don't buy anything like that normally, but the makeup girl put it on me and yeah. um, uh, I think my skin is a lot better. Yeah, I went through a period of putting those anti-aging things on in my 30s. Mm. <laughs> Your skin is very good. Look, it is good though, For isn't it? Yeah. 80-year-old man. <laughs> I love um, you, Richard. I love you too. Um, okay, uh, this is. Oh, this is all right. This is. I thought it was going to be a weird one, but this isn't weird. Nothing's what, weird between what us. Is the, <laughs> what Take is the? Take your top off. What is? The, <laughs> I've got an idea. You'd be good in this, actually. You don't do that much acting, but you could be. Um, no, never. I no. Um, auditioned for Men in Black Three. Did Not you? sure I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> okay. But I didn't get it. Okay. <laughs> and they kill kids. <laughs> Um, you could be in there. I've got an idea for a sitcom called Horny Time Traveller in which uh, just a man or a woman goes back in time and just uh, to fuck famous people from the past and fails. That's the comedy element, otherwise it would be a drama. Uh, <laughs> I might pitch both. Uh, but this comes out of that. What is the lamest modern-day item that you, if you took it back in time to, say, the Middle Ages, would lead you to be ruler of the world? What was the worst thing you could take from the modern day back to the Middle Ages oh. that would impress the Middle Aged people so much that they would decide you were the That's king of the world? That's interesting, because I often think about, like, my late grandmother. You know, if I went back in time and I showed her the iPhone and was, all the things you could do on yeah. that, how amazing she, that, that would be and how in awe she would be of that. She would. Um... Whether she'd be so not in just awe her by... though. I mean, everyone would be not just you. I think she'd be confused More by it. She was always confused by any technology, <laughs> she, so yeah. she'd be like, "Lovely," <laughs> um, and then you know, and then die yeah. as she did. Um, but an famously, iPhone would, an iPhone would be quite a lame thing to take back because you wouldn't be able to charge it, and it no. wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to use it. So it would just be a, a brick that lit up for a bit and then stop lighting up. I think you've nailed it. You'd, you'd take back a USB charger. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is very powerful um, because um, we all need one yeah. at all times, essentially. Yeah. No, um, I don't know, actually. Um, the Nintendo Switch, I think they'd find a bit <laughs> interesting, wouldn't they? I mean, that's good, though. It's, I think they'd be impressed by, like, a coat hanger or something. I think oh, is that what a, you're thinking You of? could take a coat hanger back and go, look at that. They go, how do you make, fashion this? Oh, how far back are we going? Like, Middle Ages. Middle Ages. Like so what the, have they got back then? Well, not a lot. Yeah. Just some mud, mainly some... Just... Bottled water. You could take bottled water back. They'd think that's silly, wouldn't but they? They would love that. Why? Well, they drank beer because the water was so bad. They drank, that's why everyone was drunk in the Middle Ages. Oh, it was the best time. I feel like I've really failed you on this question. No, it's a difficult question. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's a stupid question. No, I'm none of the many. questions you I'm ever like ask on this show are stupid. Okay. And don't uh, you ever think that. And if you ever think that, <laughs> call me immediately. Okay. Um, can you... I just come, like, when you interview anyone, can I just come and sort of sit sort of just off... Yeah. ...and just sort of stroke you whenever you... Like, I feel that it's going badly. Because <laughs> there are yeah. times, like, when I was driving around Italy, I thought, Richard's struggling here. Yeah. <laughs> And all he needs is a little cuddle. A little cuddle would help sometimes. But to be honest, some of them, just a little sleep yes. would be enough. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, so uh, if you could, if you could just sit there done. and just could take it. But it was more when my son had just been born. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it was all right when my daughter was born, but when there were two of them, uh, I was very tired through the second one of some of those. Mm. I mean, like, I don't even know who I talked to half the time. 
Are there any that you could say now that you really didn't enjoy? <laughs> um, there are a couple. Go on then. Usually when the guest is drinking quite a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't enjoy the second Stuart Lee episode very much. Nobody enjoys Stuart Lee. Uh, I'll ask you an emergency question. Um, oh, look, it's a good question. This is, for, this is for a date. This is a good question for you. I bet you've never been asked this. Yes. Do you have a favourite joke? <laughs> oh, fuck, I was asked this question. Well, in a way, I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about this, though. I'll have to use an a, uh, alias. Use an alias for yourself. No, not for myself. Oh, okay. The person. I'd say the people would see through that. Oh, Jason. <laughs> uh, I did a show with a um, octogenarian. Okay. Chef. Okay. Female. Okay. <laughs> Harry Jerry might be. <laughs> Her name right, might might rhyme with yeah. that. It's not gone out yet. I don't know whether they'll put it out after what happened. <laughs> um, we were cooking a chicken pie and we were making pastry. And there was self-raising flour involved in the pastry. And there's a book, uh, the joke in the book about self-raising flour. I said, oh, that reminds me of a joke that I wrote, which is um, self-raising flour, I blame the parents. It's just a stupid it's little good. whatever joke. <laughs> and um, she went, oh, you're a comedian. You must write a lot of jokes. And I said, yes, yeah, I do, yeah. And she said, oh, what sort of jokes? And I was like, there's none that I can tell you that are appropriate. <laughs> and she said, oh, no, I love jokes. Tell us a joke. And I like, was racking my brains, because I don't really write jokes. No, it's all sort of storytelling and what you've said, like kind of like uh, trolling people and whatever. The only joke that came to mind, because I was making a chicken pie, was um, misunderstood the meaning of jerk chicken, and now I'm not allowed within five miles of any farm. <laughs> And, um, and she laughed. <laughs> yeah. So I was buoyed by that. And she said, um, she said, oh, I like that. What does it mean? <laughs> and I said, it's about wanking off a chicken. <laughs> because I was confident from the fact that yeah, she'd she laughed. laughed. And the silence. <laughs> and she just went, let's carry on with the pastry. <laughs> and at the end of the, the shoot, the director said, anyone for jerk chicken? <laughs> And that was with Mary Berry. It was it Mary Berry? <laughs> I was trying to work it out. I to... <laughs> thought it could be Fanny Craddock. <laughs> if, she were, if she were still alive. Here's a good question for you. Have you ever caught a falling nun? <laughs> no. I have. That's why it's a good question for me. That's um, why I came up with that, because I have caught a falling nun. It's niche. But if you have, you've got a story to tell, haven't you? That's the thing. But if you haven't, you move on to the next one. How many, do you, how many people do you... Th Think of like people who are alive today have. Let's do a sample. How many people? Shout out! There's 220 people in here tonight. Shout out if you've ever caught a falling nun. Yeah. Yeah. No. Four fuck people. off. No. <laughs> Four people. So like one in 50 times you're going to get like an amazing story about a how, nun falling over, how, jumping how in, catching it. Defining it. falling nuns and also. Well, a nun that is falling. <laughs> That's but like a I tripping one or one that's falling from a height? Uh, either. Or... Any, you know, any of those sets. That's why it's such a good question because there's all those scenarios. There's the tripping ones. There's the ones falling from the ground. Right. I just came out and I've not really, because the lights are so bright, I've not seen the audience. Yeah. So are we in a nunnery? <laughs> <laughs> is that how this has occurred? No. I was in uh, Habitat in uh, Hammersmith. It's not there anymore. Don't go looking for it. And uh, <laughs> a nun... I just added that to my to-do list. So. <laughs> a nun tripped on the stairs and I jumped in underneath her. She felt she was falling down. I jumped in. I love you so much, Richard. Thank you. She was I'm very grateful. Give me some more. Uh, I think we should do the whole book. We could do the whole thing. It'd be interesting to, uh, to try that on one occasion. Um, and this is that occasion. Okay. <laughs> Let's do Christmas. Christmas has just happened, as you know. Oh, has it? Is that... <laughs> It was a wonderful time of year. <laughs> if you could spend Christmas with any celebrity, who would it be and how would you explain to them that why you were in their house? <laughs> Eamon Holmes. Okay. Good. And I would explain to him clearly it was because I was there to glass him with a bottle of Chateau. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Eamon. 
And um, nothing if not honest. That's good. Um, okay, here's an emergency question. I don't think I've asked anyone this question. Yeah. Some of these questions I don't remember writing and have never been said out loud. Knees and elbows seem flawed. I think we can all agree about that. What do you find most annoying about them and how would you improve them? Uh, right. Gosh, there's a lot to take in there. I mean, I don't, know why I don't know why the person who wrote that question thinks that knees and elbows are flawed. I think they're pretty good. I guess because they can break easily and uh, you can hurt them quite easily. Yeah, I mean, maybe. But they so, help like, I have arms, broken but... my elbow. I broke my left elbow. I was doing a photo shoot. Like, I mean, you can see now it's fully recovered. It's a little weaker than the right arm, but that's fine. But apparently the bone itself is a lot stronger because when they reheal or whatever, they kind of get stronger. I did that. I was, yeah, I was doing a photo shoot. And I kicked one leg into the air, because I was showing off. Yeah. And then whilst that leg was in the air, I then kicked the other leg into the air. <laughs> and then gravity did its old fucking thing, didn't it? <laughs> and I, land, I landed on concrete and landed on the elbow. And all the people in the photo shoot made the noise that some of your audience members have made, which was, are you, are you OK? A lot of that going on. And I, because you then go into shock, I was like, yeah, fine, totally fine. And carried on with the photo shoot for half an hour. And literally every photograph <laughs> in the rest of that photo shoot is hilarious because it's just me being like, yeah. <laughs> can't extend it at all, like totally in distress, like close yeah. to vomit. I've gone like grey, pink, like yellow, whatever colour, like really fucked up. So that elbow has um, betrayed me on yes. that one occasion. No, I betrayed the elbow actually, and I'm sorry well, about that, fault, Martin. Yeah. Um, uh, knees, um, also I get problems with my left knee. Yeah, well, Less so these days, because I haven't started doing yoga. Um, um, and that seems to have strengthened it out. But yeah, they, uh, the right knee's fine, but yeah, the left knee does seem to sort of give me some jip. Yeah, and you're young still. And I am a so young imagine man. Imagine when you're 50 like me, 51 be, I am now. Yeah. You're going to be in awful pain. No, but I, I also... Yeah, I will be. No, yeah. I, I definitely will be. If you were to live that long. Yes. <laughs> I know I think it's unlikely. Yeah. I do think it's unlikely. Um, but um, so I do think, oh, yeah, the knees, are, elbows are sort of less, I'm less worried about, but the knees will go. And if you remember in Baz Luhrmann's sunscreen, which I um, oh, yes, take I all, um, all ad advice from. Yes, it's a good idea. Um, uh, one of the lines in that is, be kind to your knees, you'll yes. miss them when they're gone. Yeah. So have you been kind to yours? Well, I'm not really, no. A, I've got quite fat, which puts a bit of pressure mm. on them. And, or, and I do quite a lot of running. When I'm not fat, I do a lot of running. Here's another line from Baz Luhrmann. Okay. You are not as fat as you imagine. Okay. Well, I Our... am. I, I am. I'm actually, I'm a bit fatter than I imagine. <laughs> The other day I was doing, I got called in last minute to do this celebrity house of something game mm. Hollywood quiz thing on Channel 5. I get all the big gigs at the last minute. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there was a bit where they had to do an action replay or something and then they swung the TV around for us to look at it and they, I could see it was on TV and I go, who's that really fat bloke on our team? Mm. Was, Here's another line me. from that. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess too much with your hair or by the time you're 40 it will look 85. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's true. Do you know the whole song? Yeah, I do. Let's, let's do the whole thing. I'll try my best. Okay. <laughs> it's really fucking long. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to do the whole song, am I? Uh, there's got some time. lovely bits in that, time. though. Like, um, uh, I do, like, I listen to it sort of every sort of three years and go, like, oh, actually, it's all there, isn't it? Um, things like, um, don't waste your time on jealousy. Sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind. The race is long, but in the end, it's only with yourself. That is true. Stuart Lee, tell me about him. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I, I, I subscribe to that. You, you can only compete with yourself. It's the whole ethos of me, one versus me, two. I know, snooker. that was hurtful to say the Stuart Lee thing, and I take it back, I've had a wine. <laughs> I'd rather be me than him. Well, this is it. I get very jealous of Jack Whitehall. Do you? Because I... Um, did you used to support, did you support Jack Whitehall? I used White? to support him, and I also went to university at the same time, and okay. he, like, he was the first person I met that got really famous. And it is really hard when you're sort of worked with somebody and you've been around somebody who gets like wildly famous. You get really like, oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? And really loads of respect and all of that. And then the relationship gets really sort of weird and sort of, yeah. And uh, I've never told Jack about that, but I do like occasionally just go like, oh, I'd like to do that. At, at most things that he's done, because he's done everything, hasn't <laughs> yeah. he? But he's mainly had sex with Gemma Chan. That's the main thing. That's that the I main would have thing loved, I'm actually, jealous yes. about. I met Gemma Chan a couple of times. She's very nice. Yes, I never had sex with her though, and I was no. furious. <laughs> um, I just yeah. want to have sex with a robot of her. I want to make it very clear for my if my wife's listening. 
Hello, Katie. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I apologise for being hurtful. I just said it in the moment. <laughs> it's, not, it is not, it's not hurtful. But it's, it's, yeah, it's not I hurtful. mean, also, I've worked with Steve Coogan, who's done a lot better than Stuart Lee. So, you know, yeah. it's, uh, if I was going to be jealous of anyone. I think, you know, there's people I look at who, who are doing more what I would like to be doing. Mm. I think if I, but I'm still not, I think, I think as you get older, I think it's a, it is, once you're past 40 and then getting, heading down the hill to death, uh, you sort of realise what's more. You, do, you know, I used to obsess about things like that, yeah. and be and be jealous of people, and be what, and worried about what, how things were going, and trying to work out why. Because it's so confusing life, and this is why people get starting to believe that outside forces are responsible for their lives not being that great, or yeah. you know, they think someone they're trying to blame anyone but themselves. A, most of the things that are going wrong for you or, or not working for you will be because of you for some reason. Yeah, you might they not will, know. Yeah. And B, there are more. You know, there are more important things. Yeah. Than, uh, than, you know, being the first openly gay character in a Disney film. <laughs> which is what Jack Whitehall's doing now, isn't he? Yeah. Jack yeah. Whitehall. Oh, it? Well, he's about to do it, yeah, he's about to do it. He's filmed it, yeah, he's filmed yeah. it already. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, the, yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's the thing, most of the time I don't feel no, jealous of him. I feel really thrilled for him because he's so talented and he works fucking hard. But then there are just occasionally mm. times where I go like... No, I'd like that. Or like, <laughs> but that's you know, like, human and that's normal. And again, yeah. I think it's uh, as you're younger, I think it's more. But it still, still comes to everyone. But there's, I think, as you get older, if you if you allow those things to f ferment, then they yeah. you, you turn into horrible, bitter old yeah, twat. Yeah, you do. Well, that's because you try to acknowledge it as it's happening. I go like, oh, that's interesting. That thought, and yeah. it's not just Jack. Like uh, all sorts of other comics and different people yeah, that are working lots. You kind of go like, oh, whatever. And I know that people will do it about me for stuff that I've had and whatever. Like that is the nature. Some of the people thing. look at my career and envy that. So imagine how I do. I imagine, imagine this, most people. This is an enviable gig. Like this is really fun. Like people will envy me, and quite rightly, that I'm a guest on this show because I should. I've, had a lovely time on it, always. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so I wish Jack the best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting, and you know, it's an interesting thing to talk about because I think, it, and, it, and I think comedians, especially, especially stand-up comedians and solo comedians, you know, you're working, you know, you're 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 the product, and you're fighting for the position, and there's a lot of competition. So yeah. it's inevitable you're going to feel like that. Yeah, of course. But also, you're, you know, you are. You feel like you're a the, basic bitch when yeah. you do it, though, don't you? But you're, you know, but you, if you've succeeded to the level you have, that's sort of also incredible. So it's just a, it's a flipping your mindset over. Yeah. And, you know, the other day I was I was sitting with my kids, what they're watching Noddy Toy Detective together, and my dog was resting its face on my shoulder, and I thought this is pretty, you know, this is pretty good. Yeah. You know that, so that you you sort of. You, you know, your priorities change a little bit and you, and then once you're happier, then it doesn't really matter about any of that stuff. Yeah. And a lot of the things that the really successful comedians do are really shit. Yeah. That's, but they are, you sort of get into this position and you end up doing... Horrible stuff. Well, you know, things that aren't, aren't as creatively interesting as, yeah. say, someone like Simon Munnery, who's never really had any of the success he deserves, oh, is doing much more interesting yeah. comedy than, than someone, you know, who might be at the same sort of, you know, Stuart Lee. Yeah. So it's... Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's it's all about getting it in perspective but yeah it's it's it's, uh, it's normal to feel like that. I love you Richard thank you and you should <laughs> very wise Let's be, and also you're doing about a hundred amazing things at the moment and new things you're doing the sewing bee that's, that's quite, a lot that, of fun that... and so your heckler in the audience yes. this woman here is the judge on the sewing bee my lips. you've done she's quite well she's been very good actually you've done quite well She's been very good. This is yeah. Esme Young, who is um, like an extraordinary... She's a, a, a fashion lecturer. Thing. Fashion, thing fashion thing. At Central St. Martin's. She's had an incredible life, and she's a judge on the Great British Sewing Bee. But she's also a bloody piss head, aren't you, Esme? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we went on the piss today. We had, a, we had a press day for it. I said to him, I'm going to harangue you, and I zip my lips. You've been very yeah, good, Esme. You've been very good, and... Uh, I've yeah. brought it on myself now by acknowledging that she's here. Yeah, I think you've got, we've only got about 10, 15 minutes to go, so, you know, you can... Yeah. Um, we've had a lovely day, haven't we? Haven't we had a lovely day? We've had a really cool day. Yes. You've been out getting drunk. We've been out getting drunk. With the judge of the sewing bee. I mean, yes. this is the Daily, the Daily Express are going to be all over this. He's a very good guy. Oh, yeah. I like hanging out with you, Esme, but there's a time and a place. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Esme, I love you, um, So, um, yes, I'm now hosting that show. Claudia yeah. Winkleman did it, but um, decided not to for whatever reason. So now I'm doing it um, 
and very grateful for that because it's been really fun. We filmed it in the summer and it's a really lovely show. It's made by the same people that make Bake Off and it's got all that like lovely fluffiness about yes. it. And yeah. Are you are you into sewing? No way. No. no. I don't know anything about sewing. Yeah, I well, guess well, uh, <laughs> it's good. It's a good job in it, Esme, because you know otherwise you'd just be a drunk woman saying that, no. <laughs> Looks all right. I can when do that. You, this will go out when? Like, just after Christmas? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly when they want the press to be here. To be like, this is perfect. <laughs> well, this is great. Joe and Esme trashed on Richard Herring. Um, I uh, feel like you're a bad influence, Joe, on the people you hang around with. Are you, you, I don't think Esme, Esme wouldn't have got drunk like this on her own without, without Joe, would No, you? that's true. She's teetotal. Come on. <laughs> Come on. So, yeah, exactly. No, she's... She you is rock and roll. roll. Honestly, the I life that... rock and roll. I've been hanging out partying since I was 17. Yeah. And, and she's I 17 was... next year? <laughs> <laughs> she's been hanging <laughs> rock and roll for 53 years. Yeah. And yeah. that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's a really fun, lovely show. And uh, I'm not sure either me or Esme will be back on it. But, um, <laughs> but we had a nice time, didn't we? Have a nice time. Yeah. And then, um, and then the thing that I'm really excited about, which will probably be starting if this goes out after Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> I hope you had a lovely time. Happy New Year. Um, uh, it's a Channel 4 show that um, uh, is a consumer show. Oh, so yes, it's sort of kind of like Watchdog, yeah. but with jokes. Yes. So like my take on... Because Watchdog is a great show and I approve of it, but it's a bit dry, isn't it? And um, so we're going to sort of do left field approaches to things. So we did a pilot and we actually did a really fun thing with, um, oh, I can't say the name of the company, can I? It's, it's sort of like, it's sort of like a bed and breakfast, but it exists not in the water or on the land. <laughs> okay. You got it? I think I've got it, yeah. I think. The, we discovered that Allegedly, God, like I have to be so careful, and this might have to get cut before I, like, well, I'll tell you in the room. Um, uh, we discovered that they were listing, uh, allowing people to list stuff on their platform that they didn't, nobody, like the, the owners didn't approve of. So we found things like Ellie Golding's house was listed on this platform, and she didn't approve of that. Like they'd just taken the pictures off an estate right. agents, and they were saying that whatever, and. Um, they, their public statement was like, oh, we've got an algorithm and it's fine. Like, you know, people, we can't stop it entirely, but we stop most of it. But there's loads of properties on that platform that are being advertised to people and they're paying on... So the, the rule is that they say, if you pay on our platform, you're fine. But if you get sort of directed off, then they don't have anything to do with it. Okay. But that happens so often that you get directed off and you pay with Western Union or PayPal or whatever, and then they just disappear. And so they were allowing that to happen loads. And so they didn't stop it. We went to them, we said, this is, you've got to find some way of stopping this. And they just were like, no, whatever, we, this is our policy. So what we did is we listed their office on their <laughs> platform. <laughs> And we sent in people there for a sex party, <laughs> there for like people there for a, like um, a satanic ritual, and we claimed they had a cat in a box they were going to sacrifice. I went and doorstepped them, and like they didn't let me into the office. I was like, "Would you like a glass of mint?" That was my like catchphrase. Would you like a glass of mint? Um, and we got loads of money back for one of the cases. Right. So if we get it right, it could be fucking brilliant. But it's one of those tricky things because legally, like I have to be so careful what I say even just now. Like you have to be really careful sure. what you say about stuff because they'll try and sue you and ruin your life. But um, my whole vibe is like, let's fuck these pricks up. Well, it's, well that's, that's what you do. That's, that's... <laughs> well, you won't have a job next year. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do in the book. And that's, you know, it is taking that thing. And that's what's interesting, I think, about social media is that you're able to, you know, whoever you are, I think you're able to, if you, if you are critical of a firm, they're very... They're, they don't like it, it, do they? Because they know it, you, you, whoever you are, they can be, you can be straight on to it and that yeah. goes, it gets disseminated and then they're in, they're in trouble, you know. So yeah. it's, it's great that you think of those imaginative ways of, uh, of, of showing up the kind of hypocrisy and things, which yeah. is what you've been doing in the book. And yeah, well, it's a series of that, basically. Yeah. And I'm, I really want to get sued because I think it'd be really good publicity and <laughs> I don't even mind if I go to jail because I think it'd be really, like, great. I think fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What kind like of a really sexy jail where I get yeah, fucked yeah. all night long. I don't, 
I don't think they let you choose, Esme. I don't think that's, I don't think that's how that prison works. Is that an option? What, do, you want to go, do you want to go to the horrible jail? Yeah. Or the sex jail? <laughs> or just the nice doing crosswords and jigsaws jail? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good to know. Good to have mm. the choice. I think the thing with being sued is you just lose all your money and possessions, really, rather than getting... Yeah, which is probably not really, as much fun. I don't have a, like, a family or anything. Like, no. I haven't been sued. No, I can't believe it. Well, there you are. And I'm really rude about everyone. <laughs> You're a fucking bitch, Esme, for a start. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the thing is, when you watch Showing Me, it's such a lovely show, and Esme is such a like lovely, like warm, lovely. But she's just trash tonight. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> we might get sued by the BBC. I'm yeah, not sure yeah. whether we're like in breach of contract by just being out on the lash together and like. Mm. We should say who wins the show. Fuck it. <laughs> We know, don't we? We know. <laughs> you might get sued by cotton. That would be a... <laughs> cotton itself may rebel <laughs> against you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask another emergency question. I might ask you one, Esme, as well. We'll see how Oh, you goes. should, yeah. We've got a little bit longer. Have we? Yeah. I mean, I don't... I'm, I'm literally happy to stay here for the rest of my life. OK. <laughs> but no, I just want to... You need a wee. <laughs> I, I wonder fucking why, Esme. <laughs> Joe, have you ever sucked on a fisherman's friend? Lowercase. <laughs> Same question to you, Esme. Now, that's interesting, isn't yeah. it? So... Is the subtext of that, have I ever sucked the cock of a fisherman? Or... No, the friend of a fisherman. But, like, sucked his penis or just any part anything of it? Anything could be anything. You can take it however you want. Well, I don't know, actually. I don't know because... Right, so I, um, I define myself as pansexual yes. now, which is a form of bisexuality, which is basically bisexuality, but, like, gender is part of why I think I'm attracted to people, but there's all sorts of other reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go into, it into too much detail, but I'm sexually attracted to both men and women, but also sort of gender is, like, a fluid thing. So, um, but I actually, sexually, um, don't really engage that much with men, and so I've only sucked a few cocks. <laughs> and so I'm not sure, I've not gone through the list of friends of the people whose cocks I've sucked. It's quite, it's still I'm, quite a lot of people even if it's only a few people, the friends of those people. Yeah. No, I normally go for people without friends. <laughs> <laughs> Just to sort of lower the, uh, lower the chances of it getting back to me. Um, <laughs> so, inevitably, I probably have sucked a fisherman's yeah. friend. Yeah. So, let's say yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I won't ask Esme. <laughs> no, Esme. You performed, you performed on stage here in the, in, uh, the early 80s, I understand. Yes. yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do, Esme? I sang a song on the stage in, the in 1982. With Glenn Matlock? Yes. From the Sex Pistols? 1982. I was dead. <laughs> I wasn't around. I was, I was here. I mean, I wasn't here. I was in Cheddar. <laughs> but that was filmed for Arena, wasn't it? So it's like, it's available in the archives. It was filmed for Arena. So... Somebody can find that, can't they? I have to say, it was cool, cool, cool. It sounds cool. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. <laughs> lots of, lots of um, artists. Yeah. Andrew Logan, Dougie Fields, did the backdrops for us. And we, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> have fun. Yeah. On this stage. And then it was for do tune in and trust the opinion of Esme <laughs> of the Great British Sewing Bee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, try and look it up online. We'll try and find it, Esme, online. Do. We will. I'm just telling them what you're saying because they can't all hear you, so I'm just... Oh, I'm, just no. I'm repeating I'd be it, amazed if rude. any of this makes it into the final. No, this is it. In fact, I'd be, oh, amazed. It? I'll be amazed if any of our interview makes it in. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to pretend. Uh, we just had a slightly unusual... 
where the guest was sitting in the dark in the audience <laughs> she without said a mic. Like, Maybe we should do that for all of them. She wasn't meant to come along tonight, and we just, you know, we had the interview and whatever earlier. And we were hanging no. out. And then she said, I'm going to come to you for this thing and whatever. Yeah. And then I thought she might sit at the back, and then she said, oh, space, space at the front row. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> um... I'll ask you a robot. I don't know if the last time you were on it was still a little while ago, wasn't it? Was I talking I about robot about two, sex? Three years ago, yeah. Um, Did I yeah. Ask you about robots? Well, that's the thing. I get confused because I listen to the podcast, oh, of so course. I'm familiar with it. You but just, I don't know whether at that time. Do you, when you're listening, do you pause it and pretend you're answering the questions and pretend all the time? Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I don't think I ask you this question. If there are ever sex robots, as any right-thinking person hopes, would they be self-cleaning, or would there be another small robot that would clean the sex robot? <laughs> Or would there be a person whose job was to clean out the sex robot before the next person used it? Can you think of a worse job than being that? Um, oh, Esme, let's ask Esme. Esme. <laughs> That's true. You, oh, you, it I might be if you're a human, <laughs> which you are. <laughs> um, well, as a man, it's not like wildly difficult, is it? Because you just give it a rinse. But yeah. as a woman, I'm not really sure what happens. Then you have to sort of like wait a bit, and things like if you've not used a condom, yeah. things like sort of fall out. And oh, actually no, because I'm I'm a top, not a bottom. Whenever I've done gay stuff, so yeah. actually you might have to like poo out some jeers, mightn't you? Um, <laughs> God, actually, when you think about it, it's awful being gay, isn't it? They should be stopped. <laughs> Perhaps stoned to death. <laughs> that might be an appropriate response. Um, uh, I think that they... Um, I think they probably should be self... I think there should be I some mean, process. Probably, if they've managed to make a robot that's, that's that human-looking, that people would want to have sex with it, yeah. they probably worked out the self-cleaning aspect. Yeah, I think all you need is some sort of, like... Sort of jet pump in the yeah. kind of abdomen of yeah. the sex robot that just sort of like like sprays water into whatever cavity you've like fucked, and then that sort of pushes out the uh, the jism yeah. and any kind of like hot water as well. Because I'm, yeah, I'm guessing that like maybe some soap in there. Oh God, like, a bit like... how sexy! You're right, love. Very it. sexy is that's how that's the. Answer. How sexy would it be to have a sex robot? Very sexy. Mm. Well, Esme, I have to agree. We'll have to agree to differ on this. <laughs> we'll see. There's someone the... who hasn't fucked Jimmy Carr. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think having sex with a human's got to be better than having sex with a robot. Well, yeah, but some people, Richard Herring, can't do that. <laughs> True. He says he has a wife. I've not heard from Katie since he got married. Uh, all right, I'll ask you this, and then maybe we'll... Oh, th 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 good, that's good. Uh, Esme and I are going to Soho now, I are imagine. Are you going to go? Uh, I think we might have sex, who knows? <laughs> no, I shouldn't have said that. Wait till the second... Wait, till... <laughs> Wait till after the series is finished. Wait to make sure. Do tune in to see if there's a sexual tension there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, you're the tenth sexiest man in the world, according yes, to... Yes, according to Attitude, Attitude magazine, Attitude yeah. magazine yeah. yeah. You've done your research. I have, so, you know, you've got good taste. Can you say I'm Attitude? <laughs> no, you're not the tenth sexiest man, according to Attitude. <laughs> he is. Not what I was going to say. OK, right. Are you the sexiest woman? Well, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> we were talking about this, though, before. Like, I think, you know, Esme is... Esme is are you 70 now? Or 69? Yes, I'm 70. 70. Well, I'm 70 next month. So you're 69. So you're 69. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so... 70 in February, which is not next... Oh, next month, I see you. Actually, that's impressive that she's worked out. <laughs> She knows that this is going out. Gee, this, this is the thing with Esme, like, there's yeah. things going on. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't think it. But, like, I was saying to her, like, you know, people desexualize older people. Yeah. Like, you, know, you know, Esme is a sexy person. She wants to go about, you know, having a nice life, having yeah. sex. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's sort of seen as, like, oh, a bit weird or whatever. But, you know, when we get older... Do you think... So my friend Tommy Corn has asked me this. Do you think when you're old, you'll find old people sexy? Um, I... Yeah. 
<laughs> it's weather. <laughs> It's whether you feel sexy, I think that's the thing. As you get older, maybe yeah. the, uh, that, exactly. that can... So it's up, some people do, as me, and when I'm 70, I'm going to have a nice rest. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's already started, to be fair. Yeah. 51. I can't really be bothered these days. No. I'm thirsty, I can't be bothered, because it's a lot of effort, isn't it? Yeah. 30, 40 years? Yeah. 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 Well, There'll be sex robots by the time you're 70. There so. you go, and hopefully self-cleaning. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> I'll ask you this before, and then we better go. We've had, we've had lots of fights. No, no, you. we'll stay. Okay. <laughs> oh, lovely, we could disco dance. No, what we're going to do is I'm going to put you in an Uber. <laughs> Let's have a little disco dance of that Toyota Yaris. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be the first time. Um, <laughs> it's what Esme said. I'll ask you the human centipede question, which has not come out very much in this series so mm. far, mm. which you may be aware of as a fan of the show, but is if you had to be in a human centipede, but they gave you the choice... Have I got the right... Yes, that, I, keep, well, I called it the human caterpillar the other day, because as a father, you get to get confused about this. I've been reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and then I called it The Human Caterpillar, and that's a different, yep. that's a different story. <laughs> Um, the human centipede, you're in the middle, but you get to choose. The mad scientist allows you to choose who's a front and who's behind. So you... Uh, oh, what? I, so the middle isn't an option. The, you're, in the, you're in the middle. You, someone oh, you, I see. You choose who's in front of you and who's behind you. Whose anus is stitched to your mouth <laughs> and whose mouth is stitched to your anus <laughs> is the essential question, but, you know, it's more charmingly put than that. You... Well, based on this evening, Esme's going at the back, isn't she? <laughs> Um, and then because I love you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want me at the front, honestly. Especially not today. What I have you had, had? I had cauliflower soup for lunch. I reckon I'd get some sustenance from that. So, yeah, no, I'd, I'd have you okay. and then Esme Young <laughs> yes. judge on the Great British Sewing Bee, <laughs> which starts on BBC Two <laughs> in a family-friendly fucking slot. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's been cancelled due to... <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that we'd, we've done press today for that show and it's been with, like, Love Sewing magazine and all that and we've all been like, oh, we just love sewing and all that lovely stuff and now we've got pissed and come here and be like, I'm going to shove Esme up my fucking ass." <laughs> well, if the sewing magazine asked that question, <laughs> no the questions to ask. Well, look, I don't know if you're still on tour by the time this goes out. No. No? I no. Yes. DVD or The DVD download? and also it's on download, yes. Yeah. We released the DVD because um, we pitched it to Netflix and they said I didn't have enough of an international reach because most of my show is about Paul Chuckle. Right. And they, <laughs> they were like, we're not sure who Paul Chuckle is. <laughs> and I tried to explain that he's one of um, a, a pair of uh, famous delivery men. <laughs> And that didn't help. That didn't help them. So yes, I've released it on a digital disc, and it will also be on yeah, like iTunes or Sky. And Paul Chuckle came to see the show the other day. He did. He's a really integral part of it, and it's a real kind of love letter to him because I love Paul Chuckle and his wife Sue is a really lovely lady as well. They're just really lovely couple and been really supportive. And um, he's also piss funny because he's a comedian and yes. he's really funny. So um, yeah, a lot of the show is about him. Some of it's about slagging off Tom Daly. Some of it is about <laughs> um, how much trouble I'm in with the Royal Bank of Scotland. Okay. <laughs> and that one is the I'm about to lose control and I think Joe Lysett is that the name of this? That's the name yes, of the show. <laughs> They're very, very good titles for the shows. I don't care what happens in the shows as long as you can keep coming up with titles Yes. with Joe Lysett in. Well, you've not good come luck. to any so obviously you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for the DVD. I, I watch them at home in Hertfordshire when I'm not clearing up stones. No, you're allowed. You're allowed. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please give a massive round of applause Joe Lysett! <laughs> We'll be back next week. Come back next week. Esme.
Hello, that's another, hello, it's another Rahula to put in the bag, my fan friends. Uh, do remember to go to beer52.com slash Rahula and claim your free beers. Uh, this is a lovely pale ale called Mrs. McCluskey. Oh no, it's called Club Mexicana. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you can buy my DVD, oh, Frig on 50, four disc set. Uh, and you can get that on the download. And of course, you can buy my emergency questions book, which I haven't got with me at the moment. Thanks for watching and listening at or both. And I will see you next week on Rich Tang's The Square Theatre Podcast. Run. How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>